हेलो एवरीवन वन एंड वेलकम टू अवंतिका डिजाइनरिंग सीरीज और ए डी एस एस वी लाइक टू कॉल इट एवरी वीक ऑन वेडनेसडे वी फीचर डिजाइन एंड टेक्नोलॉजी लीडर्स हु शेयर द प्रोफेशनल जर्नी दर थॉट्स ऑन द डोमेन ऑफ वर्क एंड डिजाइनरिंग वेर द वर्ल्ड ऑफ डिजाइन एंड इंजीनियरिंग मीट मेक श्योर यू फॉलो अस ऑन सोशल मीडिया इंस्टाग्राम लिंकड इन फेसबुक एंड ट्विटर एंड विद दैट लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद योर शो The term design has recently been gaining momentum with which our world is in a phase of witnessing and expecting the most magical things to happen with this wonder being seized by most of the major players it is vital to understand that design is a vast multidisciplinary domain that includes many specializations interlinked with one another while wondering what is the next step in creating a human centered approach fuels the creation of products that resonate more deeply with an audience ultimately driving engagement and growth and that's why in this episode we interact with sudhir sharma he is the founder of indie design design india magazine and has previously been associated with value labs and elephant design a pioneering design and business transformation consultant sudhir has more than 3 decades of work experience he also hosts india's best design studio awards he was a member of the india design council constituted by the government of india and is an alumnus of the world economic forum on the global council for design so let's get into a conversation with him on the design medley and unturn another stone in our journey of discovering designering hello sudhir welcome to avantika designering series it's a pleasure to host you on our show and we are excited to record along with you thank you rohit it's my pleasure to be here looking forward to the show so uh, sudhir for starters um, can you define and elaborate uh, the new normal in design for us Uh, as our icebreaker question uh, before we get into your journey and domain <laughs> yeah <clears throat> see i think the new normal is not yet set it's getting set right now but what it feels like is that uh, more and more designers would work from home like i think many of them have always wished for so so probably new normal would be to to accept that larger companies and uh large design companies as well as uh, freelancers uh, will need to set up uh, studios at home but work together so you work alone but you work with everyone else in a team so those kind of infrastructures need to be set up and i, I think that'll be normal going ahead well said sudhir when we uh, look at your profile you have a rich experience of being an entrepreneur working with leading companies being panel members uh, across uh, you know design events and juries uh, editor of a magazine wow oh, that's 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 so many uh, things that you, you, uh, you you've done so can you run us through your professional journey yeah rohit you forgot i also host my own award i write a lot uh, i speak a lot uh, i am also on panels of not just juries but also on many organizations so yeah I, i think one major part which should have been there in the beginning is that i am a designer and i very strongly always believe that designers have to be entrepreneurs you cannot have a designer who's not an entrepreneur entrepreneur in the way that you need to figure your out you, you need to figure your way out uh from things you need to figure out how to move uh, ahead so i've been a designer that by default for me always have meant that i am an entrepreneur so i i started uh, you know you know on campus i mean the moment uh, i think in every student's uh, uh, life or professional's life we have a time when the switch sort of switches on in your head saying okay i understand this and i'm a different person so for me that happened sometime in in my fourth year of graduation at uh, at an id uh, so light just came up saying okay i'm i know how to how to do things and and i started uh, working on forming my first company on campus so landed up uh, you know organizing some friends together uh, forming a company the first company 
in Pune. Um, <clears throat> while being in this company, set up the tone, set up the vision, set up the benchmark, which was um, not normal in the sense we didn't really have a benchmark to look at, but we needed to set up things of our own. So we started uh, looking at what we should be doing now, what we should be doing next. I've been fortunate in that sense that I'll, I've always been able to look ahead of the curve, uh, predict a little bit. Uh, when I look at something, I can sort of say, where is this going? Some things which I've, I've found that not everybody is capable of seeing. People see what it is today, but they don't see what it will be tomorrow. Uh, so in that uh, sense, landed up working, um, developing a few customers, clients, companies, uh, doing some benchmark work for them. And while doing this, you you realize that design community is actually a very small community. It's not a big community. So there are not many spokespeople. There are not many people who are very articulate in terms of where the industry is going, what's happening. So I started talking. I started giving lectures in colleges. I started speaking to designers. I start, landed up organizing designers. So in 2002, I uh, landed up creating a, a email group. That time it was called uh, e-group on Yahoo called Design India. That was the first uh, uh, designer community in India online. Uh, and the word social media was not there that day. So much later, the social media came in, but designers sort of got uh, united there and we started discussing a lot of things. That much later, I think after about eight, 10 years resulted that I, I thought now the time is right since there's so many students and so many designers that I should launch a magazine. So in 2010, I landed up launching a magazine which was called Pool and now Design India. And around 2015, uh, I realized that I'm getting invited to too many uh, juries. So I started looking at awards a little closely. What do they do? Why they're important? How do they actually work? And decided to launch my own awards, uh, India's Best Design Awards in 2015. So first year was only uh, uh, online. And, and later, since then, it's, it's a proper award which has been there. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I mean uh, professional journey is still going on. So uh, recently in February, uh, my company Indie Design was acquired by Value Labs. So now I'm a, I'm in a very different format, very different role altogether. Uh, and I I think that's nice. That's that's something which uh, as designers we need to be uh, changing all the time, adjusting to what is happening, adjusting to what is going to happen more than uh, what is happening to what is going to happen and not live in denial that this change is not happening. This is what many businesses do. They don't anticipate. They don't, uh, they don't realize what's happening, what's going to happen and they don't prepare for it. They don't change. So that's, that's something which I've been always lucky to have this gut feel or the intuition to do. So that's my professional life. On the way, yes, I, I work with Standard Chartered, work with ICICI, I work with Bajaj, Bajaj Auto, Bajaj Finsurf, uh, Venkis, uh, Verock, uh, I mean, Suzuki recently, Nissan on the way. I mean, tons and tons of companies and been very fortunate about that. So been a happy journey, but I think the journey is still continuing. It's going on. I mean, this is one question I can spend hours talking about. So I really don't know how much to uh, talk on this because <clears throat> there's an element of business, there's an element of designer, there's an element of uh, being a teacher, a writer, a traveler, a photographer. Uh, I mean, there's so many roles you've been playing that it becomes difficult uh, to sort of figure out where do you need to stop. So I think in a nutshell, this is what it is. Completely agree. So, Sudhir, how did all of this happen? I mean, did you plan your career journey this way? Was it accidental or uh, opportunities uh, kept coming along the way? So, so today, when you look back at your career, how do you connect all of these dots? Yeah, I, <clears throat> I wouldn't say things were planned or I had a career plan. No, definitely not. But I would say that that it's not unplanned as well. I mean, I've always when I've seen a opportunity in the face, I've known this is opportunity. And I again, I, I, I talk about this a lot. People do not 
recognize opportunities i mean i think all of us as as young people have opportunities staring into into us we may not have at that time in life experience but we have knowledge <clears throat> and we have something called guts foolishness of of youth uh, which we can use and i find too many young people sort of sitting into a very safe haven and you know sort of i can't do this i won't do this and i keep saying like what will happen if you do this can you imagine the kind of opportunities which it would create for you if you just sort of step out of that so for me i it's not planned but i would say it's been a very very conscious effort every step i don't think there's been anything which was not not uh, that that i was not aware of what this would lead into including every project which i have done i mean uh, the moment i was approached by a, a senior person from bajaj in i think that was 1992 93 um, i i sort of realized that you know <clears throat> it's a huge opportunity we need to do something and and the opportunity i saw there was that the bajaj needed a new uh, brand identity and you wouldn't believe the project was not changing the brand identity that we landed up changing in 2003 2002 2003 so many years later but i i sort of saw that opportunity coming up in in 1992 uh, and i said okay i i need to work on this then same thing happened with the icici so when icici sort of invited us to work uh, they didn't invite us to work on on the identity they invited us to work on the retail program we didn't even know what to call it you know uh, that it's called retail program we sort of coined that word we thought we coined that word but uh, uh, they invited us to design a branch for for one of their functions and i realized that this is a company which is transforming and we would land up changing the name changing the colors changing the logos you know sort of giving them direction because you know companies are are fairly clueless and not companies i would say people uh, because they don't know design and and it's not a negative they really don't know the extent design can actually help simplify their life their professional life uh, which designers can see so i land up uh, doing much more than so uh, very frankly we never got paid for designing colors and and uh, and things for icic that was not the project we do, did that as a side job we got paid for designing a branch which later became icic banks and it obviously had the colors which we had defined and those colors actually uh, lasted longer uh, than the branches have lasted okay so <clears throat> um yeah so in a way very conscious very aware but not planned that that is how i would put this but also dots always connect back when you look back and you know at a particular moment in life you say okay this at that moment you may not realize is happening for a certain purpose but later on you look back and say okay now looking back i don't think i could have launched awards in in 2015 if i had not launched the magazine in in 2010 um i could not have launched the magazine in 2010 if i had not launched the design india uh, e group or forum on yahoo in 2002 uh, i would not have done that uh, for other reasons uh, you know so it's it's always when you look back dots always connect up so that's that's another thing which i always say to young people that don't worry uh, you know when you're doing something you say it's not connected uh, with my life it's not connected to what, what i'm doing so why should i um, and i always say you know going ahead it will connect back you don't need to worry it will connect back and it'll connect back fabulously <laughs> you know it sort of uh, works out very very well hey do you know value labs as a global technology leader was presented the best employer brand award at asia's best employer brand awards 2019 held in singapore this was organized by the world hrd congress and value labs was declared a dream company to work for in it and software sector specifically and the dream employer of the year Oh, super that's that's really well put um so so the other thing that uh, i'm excited to know about sudeep is uh, time management is an essential aspect of every everyone's life 
how do you multitask with so many responsibilities you are teaching you are uh, you know hosting in a award show i mean uh, your 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 design uh, responsibilities at value labs um, you know you, we, we are talking about the magazine uh, there's so much that you're doing in the community how do you multitask between all of these things so rohit i i think we uh, when we look at time management time management doesn't happen in isolation i i think more than time management it is it is team management uh, which works so uh, i might get credit for doing so many things i am not the person who's doing so many things i i am actually very relaxed and i have a fabulous team which does things okay uh, i i learned this very early even in my earlier company and i am still in touch with some of those people some of those people are still working with me after 20 25 years uh, i think it's it's the team which you need to manage properly uh, let them work delegate them they should they sh- they need to understand you properly in the sense what is it that you planning to do how it is to be done and then let them take it and run uh, and and they do it so i i do depend on a very large team uh, as indie design also as pool magazine fabulous team of uh, editorial uh, people i have mariana i have um, anshika i have uh, pradeep ji i have satya i mean fantastic there are things which i don't need to look into uh, because it's been sort of drilled into a uh, sort of uh, practice right now um in terms of teaching i already have modules ready over the years and whenever i have time those presentations are made and prepared so i know uh, you know when i i need to go i don't, don't need to go unprepared i'm i'm prepared to go i i write impromptu but i let it cook in my head for some time over a week or something and on the weekend sort of uh, pen it down um uh, at value labs again i'm i'm telling you i'm i'm just lucky with the people i work with fabulous set of bosses fabulous set of colleagues and the fabulous indie team with me uh, super designers uh, very very passionate about their work so i would say it's yes it's a lot of calendar uh, management uh, but beyond calendar management is the team which you need to pick very very nicely very very uh, carefully and develop that team you know give them empower them to do work and trust in them so if some, if you ask somebody to do something and think about it and he comes back with something which you didn't expect be open because that guy has put his uh, mind to it right uh, and and you might get something unexpected out of it so this happens all the time with me uh, it's it's my team which is fantastic they do super job of, of doing things many times in fact i i think i'm i'm a badass guy because <laughs> i sort of uh, sit back and and relax and make other people work very hard and and all the credit goes to me uh, so i i i would say yeah it's team uh, management first time management later next also to get a feel of before you bite into something get a feel whether it's it's something you will be able to manage or not i see too many things too many people starting new initiatives efforts uh, and they you know the moment you start new thing they start projecting the end game saying oh you know this is going to become become the biggest of this 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 i'm saying that that's a wrong way look at the next step in front of you move step by step i i always feel that things like magazines uh, larger projects innovation projects you need to move step by step don't don't go to the end game straight because you you put off lot of people uh, you you don't realize that it's not just the idea which goes and builds it's a whole lot of execution that requires people it requires resources too much planning too much time uh, yeah so i think you you need all those things uh, you know into a ball in your head straight up when you're getting into something team time management also idea management you should be able to look at the idea and say okay good idea i can do it or good idea i can do it or good idea i should do it later sometime i think you need that maturity which comes with experience wow well, that's that's a valuable suggestion in fact i completely agree that uh, life is all about finding amazing people to work along with and and um, and build a uh, great products uh, or or projects along with them uh, taking the cue from uh, uh, that response uh, sudhir moving ahead uh, about the design india magazine project 
Uh, it's one of the most recognized magazines dedicated to design in India. The question that I have is, what was the motive behind it? In fact, you also mentioned seeing Design India magazine as a history in the making. It is uh, the way history is being made and we are documenting it. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah. So Design India uh, magazine, which is now called Design India, started as a Pulu magazine. And it, you know, this is the time, this month exactly is the 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 10th year anniversary in the sense we are finishing 120th issue and will be out in the market soon this month. So it's exactly 10 years. Uh, and believe me, every issue has been whether we should continue, stop, what should we do with this? Um, motivation was very simple, very, very simple. I, I think uh, I was a member of India Design Council at that moment in 2009, 2010, the first uh, Design India, India Design Council uh, and chairman was uh, Anand Mahindra. Uh, Pradumna Vyas was the member secretary and I was a invited member. So um, I, I thought the mandate of the design council was to spread awareness about design. And what is the better way of spreading awareness than having a publication of our own uh, designers and, and, you know, somewhere where we could put designers on the cover, not, not the business people or not the other people. And, and then <coughs> uh, everybody reads about it. You know, the business can read about it. The designers would read about it. Also, I felt the design uh, as seen by the designers, not by the audience. Now, that's that's something I think we can talk about something later. That's a full subject in itself. How designers perceive design is different than how other people design uh, perceive design. Designers see themselves in silos. You know, they see themselves that I'm a product designer, I'm an industrial designer, I'm a textile designer, I'm a graphic designer, I'm a UX designer. They don't see themselves as a, a comprehensive uh, something designer. The whole world actually sees you as a designer. You know, I've, I've always given examples that once I did a successful packaging project for a client, he wanted me to actually uh, decide the smell of a perfume which he wanted to launch. Uh, considering thinking that since I, I am a designer, I have a good sense of designing a package, I would have a good sense of designing uh, perfume. Then another uh, customer who came saying, okay, if I'm designing a package for him, his branding for him, can I design taste of the food which he was going to make pack and, and sell? Uh, so people have always invested that faith into a designer. The designer, matlab, you are a designer for everything. You, you can do that. And I, I wanted to be true to that. So the, the magazine we launched as a magazine, which was not in these silos and would have, uh, you know, articles from different domains. So fashion, textiles, photography, film, animation, industrial design, um, uh, automotive design. So all this together uh, in, a, in a very small, comprehensible uh, capsule, which you can sort of... Uh, take every month and you know a lot about design. So I thought uh, a lot of us, uh, we don't talk about it, but we <clears throat> get our inspirations from other designers, from our colleagues, from people I know, from people uh, whose work I'm seeing. So this would serve as inspiration to designers. If I'm a graphic designer, I don't really need to see a lot of graphic design work. I should be looking at uh, fashion. I should be looking at uh, automotive, right? Uh, so this is one one that magazine uh, which, which would, would give you uh, this thing. So I went and presented uh, this to the council. And I've always been uh, that I don't, I don't serve uncooked ideas. I go and cook them properly. So I figured out how the magazine would be, what will look like, who will write for it, how much money will be needed, who will, where, how that money will be collected, where will it be printed, how will it be distributed, whom this is targeted. So basically the whole business. And when I presented this to the council, so, you know, everyone was quiet. Nobody sort of said anything. And then Anand said that, Sudhir, you figured out everything. Why don't you do it yourself? Uh, because, <laughs> you know, doing it in an organization would be, so I sort of look back and say, mm -hmm. yeah, why not? So <clears throat> I went ahead and launched the magazine. And of course, I, I got a lot of help from my industry friends, 
uh, Bajaj supported it. Uh, Rajiv Bajaj was one of the first sponsors. Then Rajiv uh, Sanjeev was another sponsor. Uh, Verok, uh, Mr. Taranjin became a sponsor. Uh, Noshad Foods became a sponsor. I mean, fabulous. I've, I've had fabulous industry support to run this for a few years till it stood on its own feet. And the project started running well. Uh, why it's his fame making? Because there's so many designers we have. And if you actually look at the publications, even online ones, they only talk about designers in the West. Uh, Italian, uh, American, Japanese, Korean. I mean, not Indian designers. And there's a reason for that, that most of the design companies, the larger ones worldwide, uh, and the skews taken from the from the uh, practice of architecture, hire uh, PR companies, public relation companies who document their stories and they, they put it out to newspapers. They're paid, of course, uh, but then they, they put out very well uh, taken pictures and very well put together content and put it out to the uh, media market worldwide. And, and it's, a, it's a kind of soft power, uh, which I realized much later. In India, people don't do that. We, we hardly document our own work. I mean, people document work once in a while. Uh, and I realize this when you have to enter awards, you know, how many people start running around. I have to do a write-up on my this thing. I need to get a, um, a quote from my client on this, this project that we're not really prepared to document our work. So I realized that while doing the magazine, we are also preparing people to, to get ready for some kind of publication, to document their work. And... If you see then over the years now, <clears throat> definitely I, I would, I was saying this even, even at that time, it is history in the making. So you see how the beginning of design is happening in India. Design started 60 years back, right? But it is now that, that professionally it's becoming industry. People have started earning from it. People have started uh, giving benefit to the industry. There are many colleges about it. Uh, that that it's becoming a, a dynamic, lively organism by itself. And and this you can start seeing from the first pool magazine, which was uh, in, in 2010. And over the years, <clears throat> all pool magazines, because we, we mention only current designers, current work, current thought process, in the history, uh, when you look back, it becomes the documented history, right? So I started doing books. I have pool annuals, pool annual one, pool annual two, which is a compilation of the whole year's uh, publication. We did two of these only. Uh, financially, it's very difficult to do these, but I'm ready with 10 of these. And each book is, is a 400 page uh, compendium of, of work happened by designers, different kind of designers in that particular year. Uh, so that, uh, you know, whenever I, I have the wherewithal to launch all of these into the market. So I'm saying if five years ahead, it will be 15 volumes I, I can launch. And that can become a library of uh, history of design in India, anywhere in the world. So that's why I call it uh, <laughs> history uh, in the making. And we're documenting it, uh, documenting it in the language of designers themselves. It's not that we do the writing, they do the writing themselves. And, and we, we have all kind of projects. So, so that's how it is. Uh, there, there are many benefits to having a magazine as well. I mean, I, I started realizing within the first few years that uh, I, I started receiving invitations to uh, events which I wouldn't otherwise uh, be invited to or I wouldn't even know about. I started getting to know insights of organizations on international scale, which I wouldn't know otherwise. Uh, so this has had uh, a, a very positive fallout for me. Not that all designers need to know, know that, but design and, and a media is, is a very different power altogether than just being a designer. And I'm sort of enjoying that. Wow, exciting. In fact, you know, while you were sharing this entire journey, it, it, it always seemed that you could uh, cover an entire show on this journey of you making this match. Super. I, I, I can understand the dire feeling of, you know, giving birth to, to a baby and, and growing the baby and, and, and that sort of a thing. By the way, heartiest congratulations from all of us, all our listeners on um, uh, the magazine, uh, Design India magazine completing a decade. And um, here is wishing you a lot of success for the 
Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Yeah. So moving from uh, you know your journey uh, to your workplace, uh, you know we wish to understand that design culture is um, is is building a system where design uh, can thrive, and we wish to know what is a design culture at Value Lab. Yeah. So uh, I think important to know uh, what is the culture at Value Labs before knowing design culture at Value Labs. So this was a a very pleasant surprise to me to get to know this company. It's it's extremely understated. They don't talk much about themselves, but extremely principled and has very very strong ethos and and values in place. Uh, the saying is that we do the right thing always. Do the right thing always. So uh, in fact, Arjun, who heads this company, uh, drives the culture for this company, and I'm I'm so thrilled that I. I uh, have got to know him uh, recently uh, because of the acquisition but uh, even otherwise i would have been uh, extremely blessed to know him uh, fabulous culture in in place in the sense it's a very understated over delivering understanding the the customer very very properly and and then becoming extremely uni focused in in terms of how we will deliver uh, better than what we promise so that's the culture at at value labs Value Labs has a, a very nice, vibrant UX studio. They've had this for the last two years, which is headed by uh, uh, another colleague of mine, also from NID, Kadambri. Uh, and, and brilliant young people. And, and you have to see some of the unbelievable uh, comments and quotes which come in from uh, clients on how uh, this uh, UX department has been uh, performing. And I got in, and frankly, I'm not from the UX background, so I got in uh, believing that I would probably be land up, uh, landing up, uh, you know, uh, working with UX. But uh, I realized because of this culture at Value Labs, I'm given the opportunity to build a holistic uh, design system at Value Labs. I'm heading design and I'm heading marketing. So <clears throat> I, I, you know, we realized in, in first few meetings that we need to, to be a company uh, which should have design first as its principle. In the sense, every project we, we do for, for our customers or clients, if we can design it first and then launch into development, it actually results into a very different kind of relationship and, and product altogether. And in last few months, we've tasted a few of successes uh, already. So um, I was given a free hand to build a team again. I already had Indie Design Team, and now I have resources to have the, the best of the uh, people uh, from the world. And I started building a team. Now um, I'm, I'm building a team which is actually uh, following the same culture of Indie Design, which is a lot of empowerment, a uh, lot of initiative, and the ethos of, of uh, Value Labs together. And I think that's that's a very potent uh, combination which will uh, work together. I think culture of an organization always outlasts the, the people at that organization. And, and it is the culture which is the differentiation. So it's important to nurture the culture very, very carefully. And culture is nothing but how you behave with people, how people behave with other people. That that's the culture, and if you if you know or if I think this clarity of this thought amongst all the people involved, if this clarity in the sense how am I supposed to behave uh, in a certain situation, that becomes your your mantra of operating by, and that's not very different than how Sudhir would behave, or how Kadambri would behave, or how Mariana would behave or how Tarun would behave. You know, that's why it's called culture because all of us very strongly believe in that and, and that's how we go ahead from that. So that's about the culture at Value Labs. I, I think it's it's again uh, work in the process. It's happening, but it's extremely vibrant and I'm very proud of it. Value Labs Secure Child made a clean sweep for the award Standard of Excellence with its insightful thought of devising a system which focuses on safety of children through an ingenious school bus tracking system, a GPS-based vehicle tracking and security system called the Secure Child brings relief to anxious parents with a real-time information and vigilant updates. 
exciting and uh, i'm sure it's going to be a lovely experience uh, uh, you know being a part of the team so sudhir uh, you know while now you wear two hats that of design and marketing marketing is about connecting the right customers to the right product and marketing helps the sales team and people throughout the company think from outside in about what is being offered uh, convey its value in customer centric ways how do you blend the world of design and marketing together okay so <clears throat> again uh, rohit for me uh, and and especially having run my own companies uh, and many initiatives i feel design and marketing are extremely interwoven they're not really two different things uh many times it does happen in organizations and i think they pay for it because they they put the designers into a silo they don't understand how what is the requirement of a customer right so the but actually if you just look into it how would you actually design anything if you didn't know uh, what the customer needs right who understands the requirements of the customer better than a designer so in that sense i i really don't see it uh, differently but i do see that th- there are a lot of processes which would go designers uh, <laughs> if they had to uh, you know uh, land up doing calculations and planning of that sense without really uh, the creative side of the work uh, designers like doing planning and and calculations as long as the creative work is also involved in that so uh, again i i see that uh, marketing for me is extension of design uh and the way i have worked with customers in the past i've always seen design as extension of marketing as well you know unless you have a good business plan in place uh unless you know exactly uh you know what you're going to do with what you're designing uh, design becomes purposeless right uh <clears throat> so then there's another issue of sales uh so there is marketing there is sales and there is design these are three different animals they're not uh, you know though they are i i would say they are joined at the hip but they are actually <laughs> three different uh, ele- animals which need to uh, work in unison and need to uh, create the firepower for the organization and move together so i've seen this happening uh, together in in many large companies and and that's how uh, you know i'm i'm working on it so design is where the new ideas come in uh, marketing is where the ideas get executed sales is where those ideas get realized the the executed ideas get realized and and you then you know arrange your your teams accordingly and work and process uh, accordingly and i think they work uh, very well together i think going ahead this is a cue which many companies need to take not just in tech but also in in manufacturing industries your marketing and design need to be like like one department it's not just r and d it's you know research and research is now a part of design so dnm has to be the the future uh, which works together for better realization that's that's definitely an uh, exciting insight so uh, moving from uh, the world of marketing to the world of user experience design in fact it incorporates interaction design and user interface design uh, focusing on communication the question is how do graphic design skills translate in user experience design field what's different and how do visual designers ensure success in ux uh, uh, field uh, okay so i would i would actually see this slightly differently so interaction design uh, is slightly different is is pretty different than interface design uh and and like i told you earlier i actually don't see the difference between uh, see it's it's again that that self perspective of the designer so after you are in the field uh, for some time there is a component to your work which is called skills so if you're a graphic designer the skills are probably to do with colors and fonts and 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 forms and and balance and hues and and stuff like that right if you are a industrial designer skills are to do with with renderings and 3d uh, space planning and space thinking and and to be able to put out uh, uh, you know thinking in terms of uh, three dimensions uh, if you're in architecture you think in terms of building building materials how people will live and all 
So basically, I, I put that as a skill part. This another part which actually develops a little later, but becomes much more dominant in your later years, is the designer part. You become designer, and that's where the design thinking comes in. So you you become integral to you start planning things in a way that the execution will become easier. You'll you'll start planning things in a way that the one who's going to use your work uh, will be uh, will be uh, benefited. You start planning things in a certain way that things will last longer. You will start planning things in a way that that it is not environmentally destructive. So so there is that designer side of the uh, of the mind which is agnostic to the skill sides. So these are two different sides which develop into every designer's mind. Um, when you are hired into, when you are fresh graduate, the skills are very important. People, because people can only see skills. They don't see the value. They, they're not seeing your, your thinking part experience because that takes a little time to unravel and to mature. As the years go forward, I think two, three, four years, is, is when your designer part becomes very important. Skills part, you can you can delegate. Somebody else can do it for you. So very frankly, it's not how the graphic designer skills translate into user experience design. They don't. The graphic design skills remain at the interface level. It is those designer skills which translate into the user experience uh, design field. And there, you don't have to be a graphic designer. You could be an architect, you could be an interior designer, you could be a fashion designer, you could be a product designer, industrial designer. So that, that's how I, I look at it. So how do visual designers ensure success in the UX field? I think obviously, um, you know, <laughs> many ways to ensure success. Be extremely skilled. I'm, I'm not saying that uh, you should not be. I think the edge of designers is that they need to be extremely skilled in whatever they do. But be extremely uh, critical, be extremely analyzing in your head and thinking in your head and thinking ahead. And I think that faculty is more important. Uh, and, and when I'm hiring a team or when I'm looking at a team member, for me, that, that faculty is very important. And I really believe that one cannot exist without the other. So there is a, a movement into the market that will teach you the design thinking part. You don't need to be a designer for that. I really don't have faith in that. That doesn't really work uh, for me. That moves me to my next uh, question. The heart of communication has changed over the last few years. And there are other elements uh, which have become equally important uh, to language in the minds of the audience. The visual side of conversation that is playing out. How do we master the art of visual communication? See, very simply put, visual communication is the ability of being able to translate what's in your mind uh, into a format which the other person can react to. Okay. Uh, so if you, for example, if I tell you, boss, yay, you know, this will be something like this and it'll be like this and it'll be like this. I'm talking about it and I want you to visualize, say I'm describing a bird sitting in front of me. And if I describe it and you think of that bird, I'm telling you, we will be thinking of two different words, birds, not, not the same bird, right? Now, now this is where the visual communication comes in. If I have the ability, I'll be able to put it down saying, this is the bird I'm talking about, show it to you. And you look and say, ah, this is the bird. We're both talking about the same bird. And, and I'm telling you that is that is a huge, huge uh, growth uh, for humanity or, or development in, in, in terms of the human spirit uh, or in terms of communication. Because what you explain by words and what somebody else can, can visualize is completely different. The moment you put it down in visuals and, and say, this is exactly what I mean, the guy, the other person has no doubt what, what you mean. And I think that is that requires a lot of clarity of thinking to be able to do that. Because the moment that other person starts looking at that bird, he will start looking at the problems in that bird, right? If I, I draw a beautiful uh, something for you and say, Rohit, look at this, this is so beautiful. And like, no, I don't like it, why? Because I don't like the color red. Can, can you imagine? I like, I love red, you don't love red. That conflict we would have never known. Unless, okay, then the question comes, you know, how many reds are there? There, there, there are a, probably a million uh, reds. So I, I feel visual communication or graphic design is finally 
uh, the art of coming to uh, coming together on certain conclusions with with unanimity with saying absolutely this is what i wanted and this is what it is and and thousand people could do that <coughs> sorry now imagine that happening to millions of people in terms of technology today what you download in terms of an app uh, and and say i i want a million people to download the app and and like what they are looking at not only like to know what they are supposed to do next uh, with that is is i think the supreme uh, kind of it's a art by itself it's 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 i i don't know how to explain it uh, it is divine in, <laughs> in that sense so so that kind of power exists only with very few people you know yeah yeah so that that that's how i will explain it very very beautifully explained with that example and in fact now that brings us uh, uh, to our last question for the uh, show sudhir uh that at avantika university we coined this term uh, called as designering i mean you are a designer with a technology company and uh, we said that the next uh, breed of designers would need to understand the uh, world of technology as well as the world of design and, and that's where we uh, built up uh, you know the university on this philosophy my question is how has technology opened doors for visual communication so i think uh, it's not just visual communication technology has opened doors for everything so we need to see and realize that technology is what wheel was you know when probably wheel was invented i mean today if you sit back and say who invented technology i think we'll land up into the same discussion right who invented the wheel uh, what a wheel did to manufacturing is what technology is is doing to the whole uh, thing of visual communication i i think it's it's that primal uh, a concern and i don't think it's it's a reversible thing it's not like you can say okay i'll go back and and not uh, use technology anymore you can't you you cannot so in in this environment which is a different environment altogether we we have to the technology is like 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 one of the ingredients for for design uh, more and more it's not really a separate subject it's almost like like pencil was uh, or or you know something uh, charcoal was to the sketch of the painting uh, uh, to rembra uh, probably technology is for designers today you start thinking with technology it's it's a step it's a step you you move ahead uh, with okay so i i feel that it's not going to be possible not to have technology anymore in fact i i do see a lot of uh, fine art courses uh, commercial art courses government courses which are lagging behind because i think nobody sort of looking at them uh, and and uh, redeveloping them but i i see a lots and lots of education now needs to reorient and take technology in its uh, stride and make technology as as the base so at avantika uh, i i think what you're doing is absolutely right the you need to start with technology and then uh, have design within that realm at the same time let me make a difference i think nid has has made this difference for last uh, 60 years that that design mindset is a different mindset than a engineering mindset and i think that that difference is needed to be acknowledged and needed to be understood otherwise you are creating a khichdi uh, design mindset is to do with creating something the engineering mindset is to do with doing something you know whatever has been created needs to be scaled and and executed one cannot be working without the other both have to work together but at the same time both have to work independently i think wherever you mix it up you haven't seen many good results so far so that that's just a sense of caution from my side but uh collaboration absolutely i think designers and engineers have traditionally worked together to create things in this uh, industrial world and that's how it's going to be in future also i don't see it any different oh that's that's uh superbly packaged in a very very candid way and and a very interesting way so there it was uh, lovely to host you on our show um i'm sure there's so much more to interact with you and know from you uh but i'm sure that our listeners will get in touch with you uh over the social media and uh, uh, definitely seek your advice thank you so much for doing this for us 
uh, lovely, lovely talking to you. Thank you so much. Hey there, we hope you enjoyed our show. Do write to us on ads at the rate avantika.edu.in. We look forward to your opinions, feedbacks and suggestions of speakers you would like us to host on this show. Do tune in our channel next week on Wednesday for a new story on Hub Hopper or wherever you get your podcast from. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and Twitter. Thank you.